Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here, playing some more Warhammer combat cards, continuing the campaign, and I'm down to the last two matches after powering through the first 18, and uh, I don't know who we'll be up against, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I am playing as Grandmaster Voldus, running three legendaries. We've got Mephiston, Tigurius, and Njal Stormcaller. All of these guys are really strong. Mephiston and Tigurius are very durable, with fear and shields, respectively. Uh, Nyal Stormcaller, a little bit more of a glass cannon, I guess. I mean, he still has 250 health, so... Uh, we're supporting them with three healers, so we will see if this works out. Let's go ahead and deploy. And in this video, I do hope to get uh, the two matches into a single video, so we'll see if we can blast through these forces of chaos really quickly. And we are up against Ariman, leading... I'm assuming, a bunch of Zinch bodyguards. Uh, quite a few of them, by the looks of it. Uh, is that ten bodyguards I see? Alright, well, we'll drop down Tigurius first. And he is, what, 41 points. So, I think we'll start him off as the priority threat on our side, and get some healing in. Um, let's just go with, uh, I guess we'll, we'll go with the, the weakest of the healers, or the one with the, the least health. We don't really want them on the field for that long. Okay, well they got the blue scribes, that's uh, kind of an annoying one. They've got quadruple shields and inspiring presence, so we do want to deal with that. Uh, I guess the question is how exactly do we deal with it? I guess we'll drop Mephiston down, I'm not sure actually that if that was the right choice because he is actually my most expensive bodyguard, so when he dies, um, they're going to be getting a lot of attack stats. He does have death blow though, and we do have several opportunities to heal him at least. And with max level fear, uh, he should be pretty durable, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Tigurius just blasting that sloppity bile piper out of the way. Um, that is not a Zinch demon. Hmm, okay, that was random. Uh, okay, they've got a flamer that just deployed. Got Ariman's Bolto change zapping away every turn. Uh, let's see, do we want to go psychic or do we want to do something else? I guess we'll go... Yeah, we'll, we'll go Psychic here. And maybe, I don't know, I could shift Mephiston over. I'm not sure if I want to keep him in the middle. Um, but then again, yeah, maybe maybe we should. So I think we'll, we'll keep dropping healers down, just healing my guys up, and then, uh, let's see, this one only does, this one doesn't do very much damage, actually, so maybe we will move Mephiston over there and just drop this Apothecary here in the center. We have to just get through so many bodyguards. Of course, every time one of my healers dies, I have a chance to deploy a new card, and that will power up the Psychic Attack on my Psychers, so... Uh, that's gonna be... They're gonna be doing a lot of damage, that is for sure. Alright, we'll be able to zap two more of these demons away this turn. Uh, let's see here, so we got... Okay, looking pretty good. I guess the Blue Scribes are actually... They just debuffed my Psychic Attack. Alright, what's going to be deploying next? Another Flamer. And, okay. I guess they're trying to represent all of the Chaos Gods here. We've got, uh, we had one Nurgle Demon, now we have one Corn. Uh, that is a Skull Cannon there, in the right lane. And they are working their way through Tigurius's shields. I think he has just one remaining now? Okay, never mind, he has two. Okay, so he's still good. Um, let's see, how much damage are we going to be dealing this turn? 180, that's not bad. We're debuffing their ranged attack. Okay, how much, what is the ranged on Tigurius? Okay, so he can take out the Skull Cannon next turn. We have not actually been uh, doing a very good job of uh, destroying their priority threats, though. And actually, I think, so this is 20 points, this one is 22. So yeah, that one is going to be the new priority threat. Which we're not going to kill because I'm dropping the Paladin Apothecary over in that lane. So he gets targeted. But still, we're keeping our guys alive and that's the most important thing. So, Alright, they're going ranged. Barely dealing any damage, but once again debuffing my Psychic Attack. And okay, what are they going to bring out next? I honestly just have no idea at this point. A Pink Horror, okay. Well, that's not too bad. He will be able to destroy... Uh, well, he's still at two shields. Wow. I'm just not paying attention here, but... Um, 
Actually, no, because they're, they're still targeting the Apothecary, so... Yep, Tegaris' shields remain intact. That's pretty amazing, honestly. Uh, so far, they really haven't deployed anything with very much attack power. I'm, gu I'm guessing they're saving the best for last. I'm sure we'll see the Lord change. Um, yeah, I, I guess... This is not as uh, difficult as I was expecting. Alright, uh, let's continue with Psychic Attacks. Might as well. So we'll zap those two minions away. And then I, I guess the two strongest minions are going to deploy across my two biggest guys, which I uh, don't really want, ideally, but uh, at this point they're strong enough that I think they can handle it, maybe? Okay. So just a bunch of demons. Got a demon prince. It's got fear. Now, uh, what are they going to go for? They do have a really big Psychic Attack charged up, which is kind of scary because once Ariman himself deploys, he is going to be dishing out some serious damage. So we do have to watch out for that. And we only have one bodyguard left, which, who is uh, Stormcaller. Now, I think we can actually keep Mephiston in the center, though. Um, obviously, we don't want him to die, but uh, I think the fear will protect him. He still has nearly 400 health. Um, if he dies, he's only going to be dealing 100 damage with the death blow, though. Alright, we do have Inspiring Presence on the field now, so dealing lots of damage. And 227, oh, it's so close. So close. Actually, we're just going to go ranged here, I think. Going to go ranged. I uh, don't quite want to bring out Ariman just yet. I think we want to destroy his bodyguards first. Okay, they got Signing Blast of their own, of course. They're going melee. Yeah, what we just do not want happening, obviously, is Ariman firing up a supercharged psychic attack against old Voldus, because he's just going to die instantly. So, uh, this worked out pretty well, though. Uh, we're going to definitely wipe these guys out here. Just clear out all the bodyguards, and then we get a massive boost to our attack stats. And poor old Ariman has nothing. No bodyguards, no psychers to buff him. So his, so his uh, psychic link just goes to waste. It does have a warp surge, but it's getting reduced uh, by the fear, so <laughs> that's just sad. That is so sad. Look at that. Well, uh, that was surprisingly easy. But I guess if you don't have these three legendaries, it could be quite a bit more difficult. How much damage can we do on this final turn with this uh, charged up psychic attack? That's uh, 1,343 damage. Okay. Bit of an overkill there at the end. All right, let's skip that, and let's let's move on to the final match. Well, if the second to last match was that easy, I don't know. I hope this last one is a bit more of a challenge. Um, okay, uh, who is the Warlord? Wait, what? Oh, oh, do I get to choose? Oh, so we have everything available now. All right, well, uh, I didn't want to make a decision here. Okay. Um, well, Helbrecht worked out pretty well for me, so I think I um, could go for him. I mean, there's a lot of other good options, though. Alright, I think we'll, we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. I really like the uh, Berserk Deathblow combo. Those guys just deal so much damage. So we got two of those guys, then we got Marnius Kalgar, who's got a really big Furious Charge, and then Tor Gerdon, who's got Big Game Hunter and Shields, and then we got two healers, and then the Scout, who will buff the melee attack. So with Helbrecht, uh, yeah, should be decently strong. Let's go ahead and deploy, and we'll see what we're up against. Okay, should have known it. Scarbrand. Okay. Now, Scarbrand has a really strong special rule. Basically, uh, Skulltaker and Logan's, Logan Grimnar's special rules combined, but even better. Uh, and, let's see, he is at uh, level 14, apparently. And he's, whoa, he's got Furious Charge and Berserk. Okay, this is the first time I've actually seen a dual trait Scarbrand. That is actually kind of scary. It's got me a little worried now. Um... And they got the initiative, so this is going to be lovely. Uh, who do, okay, so we have to actually be kind of careful here. Um, I guess we'll go with maybe Tor Garadon. And we'll drop down a healer somewhere, but we'll see what they are dis decide to deploy. The Skull Cannon doesn't... Well, that actually deals more damage than I thought it would. I guess we can uh, drop down old Bayard's Revenge in the center. And we do kind of want one of those berserk. Okay, two skull cannons. Okay. Well, that's that's lovely. 
Well, we do want a tech marine in here, I think, so we'll, we'll just go with that. Uh, that will keep old Bayard alive a little bit longer so he can power up a, a bigger death blow. They're going to go ranged. Yeah, this is this is not ideal. See, this thing, uh, this thing keeps showing up in a lot of the, the matches here. It's only got two shields. Okay, so we'll go with uh, we'll go with the melee, and then on the the next turn, our our next turn, we should be able to deal some pretty good damage here. Take out that skull cannon in the center, and that'll give us a pretty big boost to our stats, both from killing the priority threat, and also Hellbreck's special rule. Uh, the tech marine should die. Uh, which means we can deploy a bigger guy to the field. I don't know, do I just want to go all in with the, the big dudes? Or do we want to heal them up a little bit more? Is the question. Because, um, yeah, we could put down, like, uh, Ragnar Blackmane, who would become the new priority threat. I don't think I want to deploy Marnius Cover. I think we want to save him for the end. So I guess we will just go with, uh, yeah. We'll go with Ragnar Blackmane here, I guess. And how much damage does he do? 110. What's this guy at? 147? Okay, let's switch it over like this. Bit of a risky move here. But, yeah. We'll be powering these guys up big time. You know, I just remembered. The ultimate counter to Scarbrand. Why didn't I think of that? Watch Captain Artemis, obviously. He can just destroy... You know, just chip Scarbrand's health down to nothing very quickly with his special rule. I didn't even think about that when choosing the Warlord, but... Well, we'll see if uh, Helbrecht is able to deal with him. Now, they got a really big melee attack charge up all of a sudden, and they are going for it. That's a lot of damage incoming. Now, we're going to be hitting back a lot harder, of course. And actually, we're going to clear the entire board. That means Scarbrand himself is going to deploy with that Furious Charge. That's a little scary. Um, but we do have three bodyguards remaining. We also have a massive death blow here on both of these guys. So, uh, we'll see what they bring out. They've got, all right, Karn the Betrayer, Scarbrand, and a Bloodthirster. That is one scary combo. Thankfully, it is our turn. So, yeah, this is going to be like the craziest chain reaction of destruction here. So, let's see here. Oh, Torgerdon, big game hunter. He, he actually, he's going to be able to take out Karn in a single hit. And then this massive attack series is going to go off. I think, yeah, the first to die will be Ragnar Blackmane, so his death blow will go off. And then Bayard's Revenge, his death blow will go off. It'll kill the Bloodthirster. Uh, that means Torgerdon should survive, and he will gain a whole lot of attack stats. So let's let's watch this happen. I'm, I'm kind of glad I went with Helbrick now, because this is a lot more exciting than, I think, any other Warlord. 300 damage, that's nearly half of Scarbrand's health in one hit. That's crazy. So, there goes... Oh, he's getting the attack stats. 278 damage. Boom is going to go the Bloodthirster's death blow. Takes out Bayard's Revenge. His death blow goes off, and it just hits Scarbrand <laughs> in the side for 167, leaving him with 7 health. Oh, there's the... I forgot about that. Got a cleave attack, but Torgerdon survived magically. And look at him, he is just crazy. So yeah, now we can just win with uh, the Furious Charge from Marnius Kalgar. That is... that's nuts. Well, that was one heck of a finale. That was pretty good. And we got the Inspiring Presence now. Man, this guy is just going crazy. Got the healing. Well, Scarbrand is a lot less scary looking now, that's for sure. And there you go. Like, that is the end of the event. Uh, again... It's largely thanks to having a lot of these really powerful cards, uh, the ones with the dual traits. That death blow, uh, Berserk combo is just so strong. It's probably my favorite combo in the whole game, I think, in terms of traits. Um, but yeah, the legendaries are all quite strong. Uh, having things with shield really helps. Um, but yeah, that was actually the copy I needed to upgrade Inquisitor Greyfax to level nine. I'll go ahead and do that. I actually have quite a few legendaries that are just like one copy away from upgrading, so getting them though is the, the problem. It's just so hard to get legendaries these days. But yeah, uh, that was the campaign. It was quite a bit of fun. I enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see what part two brings. 
But that is it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.